We are going to miss you, but it's not going to be forever. You got to say goodbye because we're nomads, right? Mm -hmm. It's the hard part of the job. media tent look at the people over there it might be busy you know they might have not made it big enough oh wow there's the media tent let's see if we see our name there we are 11 a.m all right i think we're ready let's play the can you hear me game yes you can hear me well, y'all, we did it. It's over with, and we actually had a good time. It was a completely packed audience. Um, people laughed, people nodded their heads. I saw a lot of head bobbing there as we were talking about stuff. We saw people really interested. We got to meet several folks afterwards, which was really what did my heart the most good, being asked questions and being able to help people. What do you think? I was more nervous than him. I thought I was going to pass out before it started, but he did really good. I just wanted to make sure that I didn't mess up the pictures and show something that people should see. Oh, that reminds me. I couldn't see the pictures. When yeah. we rehearsed, I could see them, and I had to ask her, Sean, is this a boondocking picture? <laughs> so God blessed us today, but it was a good day, and now we're going to go back and just have fun. Yes. This is us attempting to go through the big tent. It's opening day, I guess. Very busy. Bad on us for scheduling a seminar on opening day. And they said this is busier than it's been, what, the past couple of years. Yeah. So we're on our way out to maybe tour some RVs. And we survived walking through the big tent, right? <laughs> All right, y'all, this is the Alliance 310RL, which means rear living. Look how neat this looks. Ooh, carpetless slides, flush oh, floor slides. that's awesome. And something that's different than ours, it's a flush floor slide on this side, too. Yeah, and then you said that's the pantry in the corner right here? Yeah, they got a pantry right here. A decent sized pantry. Very deep pantry. Yeah, and then they have a big fridge. And then the bathroom. Oh, look at that shower and that sink. And then here's the bedroom. Oh my goodness. That's a nice shower. Too. Matthew, they have a window above the bed. I like that. And the closet. The ceiling seems about the same height as the reflection, but you know what I like? That window. I do too. This is a 310RL storage, y'all. This is huge, kind of like our reflection. Yeah, this is storage like ours. This is an Alliance 36BRM, and y'all, it's got a rear bunk. How cool is this bunk? Wow, that's neat. They got lots of windows in here. It doesn't seem like a little prison room. That's really neat. Lots and I like these colors in here, too. Now, the TV's a bit of a neck wrecker, but it's not terrible. Then you, you go Darn the YouTubers. Night. Hey. <laughs> Good. Good. How are you doing? Oh, man. I'm sorry. We love your channel. Oh, thank you. I really yeah. appreciate that. And Liz. Liz. I don't mean to be way up here. This is a 382RK rear kitchen. A huge kitchen for an RV. Look at the pantry. That pantry is deeper than ours. It isn't is it? deeper than ours, yes. Oh, look at this window. Yeah. Look at the cabinets way up there. And then here is the living room. This, is, this has to be 42 or 44 feet. Yeah. Well, at least you have some seating right across from the TV. Right. Here's the bedroom. More windows. And there's a cubby hole right there. And then it's a rear bath. Oh, and they have USB charging stations on either side. In the cubby holes. This in the a huge, huge closet. Yeah. Look at this huge sink. Have you ever seen an RV sink this big? 
Y'all, we are walking through all the food stands here in Quartzsite, and Matthew's getting hungry. I want a snack. What do you want? There he is with his mouth open, waiting for food. <laughs> Insert food here. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, are you wanting a lobster mac? No, I just saw it. And they got pulled pork, pulled pork mac too. Let me see what they have over here. Okay. Hey y'all. Right howdy, howdy. Hi. Well, this is Dora and Ed, and y'all are um, work campers. Yes. And what? What, what exactly it, do you do yeah. for work camping? Right now, we're working for JC Security. We have, they provide gate guards in the field, uh, renewable energy, and also construction sites. But we have a YouTube channel. What is it? It's called It's a Good Life RV. Make sure you stop by and say hello. And then these two wonderful people send them all our Yeah. And you'll find out a lot of information on their YouTube channel. Hey y'all, we came, we saw, did we conquer? Yes, we conquered. I mean, you walk through the big tent. I mean, they have some helpful stuff and some not so helpful stuff. It's like, what does this have to do with our being? But yeah, they had like neon signs and did glass have, like, poles. Did concrete and... benches? How do you all <laughs> that in an RV? And a hot tub, y'all. You mm. can't go RVing without a full-size, hard-sided hot tub. Didn't you know that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and also, when you walk in the show, um, they give you these little bags. And they're filled with all kinds of goodies. And one of the goodies that they gave us that's in there is the court site um, brochure that's got a map of the whole event. Our name is in this. Yeah. So that was really neat. Our first RV show, y'all, and we got to have our names in the brochure. Mm -hmm. And then our solar company was there and they were handing out their brochures. And look, y'all, if y'all got one, there we are. We're in the brochure. Our picture's in there. So that's awesome at the Quartzsite show that we were mentioned in two different brochures. And they were busy, y'all. The solar company, mm -hmm. uh, Solar Energy Systems of Indiana, they were really busy. And one other thing before we get off the show, we got to see a very unusual, I think it's like probably out of the future or in the future, how do you say it? Like a futuristic RV. Yeah, like you don't think it's possible because I remember we told one of our friends, we're like, we went to the courtside show and we saw this and he seemed puzzled. Oh yeah. Because he couldn't picture it. It was a truck camper toy hauler. No kidding. <laughs> I mean, have you ever seen one other than the one that we're showing you? That's it. That was amazing. I mean, so yeah, you have like your little climb up the ladder, have your little bed and stuff, but you can also take your side by side with you. Mm -hmm. And over. maybe tow a trailer behind it. Retired. I'm retired. Go around this fixing the leave. Yeah, on the back of their Jeep, y'all, it says what Sean just said. I'm retired. Go around. <laughs> They're not going to hook up until they get to the dump station. It's always the saddest when, when your family and friends take off and you have to wave goodbye. To Tom and Ann, man, y'all found us in an RV park in Utah, just walking your dog, one of your dogs, and we became quick friends. We are gonna miss you, but it's not gonna be forever because we're all on the road. And y'all, yes. this is what happens when you meet people and you make friends and you meet family. You got to say goodbye because we're nomads, right? Mm -hmm. It's the hard part of the job. But the good thing about being an RVer is you can always meet again. That's right. All right, y'all. Here's a quick tip from BDR because we royally screwed up. <laughs> That's right. If you're boondocking and you drop a pin and you're staying like off the road, not next to the road, but like way off grid, and you drop a pin and you give somebody your longitude and latitude, sometimes the GPS's people use will not recognize that. And they go to hit, give me driving directions, please. And we did that. And it sent them 30 minutes away to the middle of the zip code that it was in. Cause it didn't know that we were here off grid. Sorry, Dora Ned. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what we found out is if you're way off grid and you want to give somebody loca your location, go to the nearest road, mm -hmm. even a dirt road, anything that you can find on the map, stand at the edge of the road, give them those coordinates and then guide them from there. That will work. That's what we did. And we learned a lesson at our friend's expense. <laughs> yeah. And thanks Tom and Ann for showing us that because they were the ones that said we always get coordinates from the road. I'm like, Any oh. road. 
okay, good to know. Well, yeah. we didn't know that, but now we do, and now y'all do. No one's half the battle, as they say. Hello, y'all are such an awesome community. Yeah, you are, and we really appreciate each and every one of you who let us come into your homes and into your lives, and you let us be a part of your lives as well. Bonnie just stopped by to say hi, and Bonnie, it was an absolute pleasure to meet you, and we mm -hmm. sincerely hope we run into you on the road again. Mm -hmm. Y'all, we love getting to, getting to meet you and getting to say hi. It's one of our favorite things. Yeah, don't be shy. If you see our rig, you know, come by and say hello. We love meeting people. Mm -hmm. um, we want to meet more of y'all, actually. And The BDR community is, yeah, I know, I'm busy. very popular person. <laughs> The BDR community is just the best. We really do love y'all, and we really enjoy getting to see you. And remind us to, if y'all aren't shy about pictures, take a picture with us, a selfie. We need to get better at that. We and really do. Also, if you haven't had a sticker from us yet, ask for a sticker, and we'll give you a sticker. Yeah, absolutely. And we hope to see y'all on the road. Yes. All right, y'all. There is a rarity here in the desert. We finally found them. You know who we're talking about? There they are! Let me see you. <laughs> it's the wandering shores! <laughs> and they didn't get lost. I'll get y'all a close up. There they come! They exist. They want proof. Yeah. We're here, everyone. We made it. <laughs> All right, y'all. We've got our two 30 pound propane tanks here. And the reason is because we told you we got these wireless sensors, right? We got these wireless sensors from Lippert, and what happens is it'll go back and forth between, like right now this tank specifically is at like 58%, and it'll tell me 100%, and then it'll go back to 58 and back to 100, and it's a yo-yo, it's like it's bipolar. So I called Lippert, and they said the only thing I can really do is um, take it and unpair it from the phone. That means the phone forgets about it, it no longer exists, and start over like it's brand new and they want us to switch the sensors, put this one here and that one there. So I'm gonna do that right quick and we'll let you know if it works. If not, maybe we'll have to get new ones. Yeah, we've had these about a year now. They should last a long time. So there's not like you can do anything with them, but look how small they are. You can't really take them apart. You can't pry into anything. The batteries are still good in them. So they either work or they don't. So hopefully this does it. And by the way, when you transport your propane, you should never transport a vertical tank on its side. I only have these on their side temporarily so I can do this because I can't hold it over my head. You know, it'd be kind of funny. Now, just in case these things are too close together when I'm setting this up, I'm going to go ahead and put tank one back where it goes. And that way, there's no confusion, hopefully. All right, so we got tank one put away. Now let's try a problem child. This is the one tank two. I don't normally like to use both tanks. I usually, when we get done with one tank, we try to fill it up again. So we always have one in reserve, but I don't know. Guess we got kind of lazy. So tank two is partially full and I know it's not empty. So that's why we had to redo all this because it's not showing correctly. All right, so I finished this one and I'm having problems. So this is tank two, and this is the one that has juice in it, right? It's got propane in it. And tank one is pretty much out, like 11%, 15 something like that. And so after I pair them up with the phone, it would switch them automatically. And I'm like, why are you doing this? So I'd switch it back, and now it's saying the levels are wrong. So Lippert said if it was still wrong, call him back, and I'm going to have to call him back, and I will let you know what the progress is. Um, maybe they'll just replace them. I don't know, but this is mighty frustrating. We've had these a year, and they've done really well until now, and then they both just go wacky. Good morning, y'all. It's a work day for us, but as you know, our desks are at the back of the RV. So I work on one side of the desk, and Matthew works on the other side. So let's see what Matthew's doing. There he is, he wants privacy, it's top secret, y'all. Is he editing the video? Does he not want me to see what he wants to put in there? Cause he likes to embarrass me on the videos, y'all. But here's my space, and there's his space. And yes, that's him, there's his feet. It's not just a blanket. He's not talking. You wanna Hello? say? 
All right, there he is, y'all. So let's give y'all a side view over here. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you making fun of me? There he is, y'all. This is a typical day in the life of Broken Dreams Reborn. Matty wants his privacy. We've just been struggling with the internet. I mean, it's just been a real pain. <laughs> we knew it would be bad when we got to Quartzsite for the show. I mean, we knew it would be, but we thought it would at least be usable because what, we have all three carriers. And what's happened with them? Well, T-Mobile didn't even show up to the party. They didn't know there was a party here in Quartzsite, apparently, but- They um, won't even connect. They literally uh, will not connect. And then Verizon is here for upload, but they're like, eh, you don't need download. I'm like, yeah, we've seen everything from, what do you say, 0. Point 0. 0.5 to, I think we peak out maybe at 4 to 6 yeah. for Verizon, but sometimes you only get that for like a few minutes. <laughs> and, and then it goes away. AT&T is about the same. It's good on upload. So we are mm -hmm. able to upload our content and our videos and stuff, but when we go to answer y'all's comments, I'll go and comment or Matthew will comment and just spins. I'm like, come on. Uh-huh. It's frustrating. <laughs> so the lesson here is... We need Starlink. If we mm -hmm. come to a big convergence area where everybody just pours on one area, I think we need Starlink. I don't know if Starlink's perfect. We've never had it before, but it would give us another ace in the hole when it comes to internet. And when we are at the show on Saturday, which we're going back today, we can try again. Oh, yeah. AT&T was actually good right mm -hmm. at the show because they said they put in a temporary tower. Well, was that a temporary tower for AT&T? I don't know. So maybe we could have, like, camped at La Posa West and it still might have worked. I don't know how far the range was, mm -hmm. but it wasn't... We didn't want to take that chance because that's where the high concentration of everybody is and we <laughs> thought it would be worse. But it's not that great here on Plumosa and we're about, what, a mile from the big tower now or they, something? They say High Jolly is the area with mm -hmm. some of the best internet, but that's why, man, it is jam-packed in there. Yeah, you got no solitude. It's there. really crowded in there. So, as I know some of y'all probably have never been to Quartzsite. Y'all want to experience and maybe you don't have Starlink and you'll know what to do for next year based on our experience. Either that or find you a spot right beneath the cell tower and then you're good. Mm -hmm. 